Hi, this is Bobby Klein. I'm the translator and the interpreter of the I Ching. This is a new earth I Ching, easy to understand, easy to put to use. It's an oracle, 3,000 years of wisdom wrapped up in this. So sit back, take a breath. If you've got a question in your mind, ask it. If not, just hang in and you'll get some answers. And that's what this is all about. The I Ching, they say, is the book of change, and it is, but it's also the book of answers. All right. Tune in. Drop in. You're home. Yeah. You're home. The sweet shifting light Carving shadows in the sand May I have this dance Feels like time for slow dancing. So join me as we step back 3,000 years. 3,000 years to tune in. Tune into the wisdom of the oracle, the I Ching, the Yi Jing. It means the book of change. And changes are here, man. Big time. It is also the book of answers. So think about what you want an answer for. Here we are. It's time for gathering together. Maybe now more than ever as we come together. We cannot come together as one, that's a fantasy, but we can come together as a collective, as a tribe, as a community. And this week, number seven, Chai, the collective, that's what's come up. And I believe it's come up at the right time. It's two trigrams above is the center of the earth. The basis of all things and below is con, the gorge, the snare, taking of risks. And isn't that what it's about? Taking of risks. That's what you got to remember, you know. No risk, no growth. You know, jump in. I recommend feet first. Head first. Hmm, you never know. <laughs> The wisdom, power to the people. Bring your legions together alone. You will survive. Move together and you will prosper. Oh, yeah. So, you know, we wonder what's coming, you know. So we look at what lies ahead. All in our situation. Well, what lies ahead is great. Nothing less than great. It will require great risk to achieve even moderate gains. You listen to it again. It will require great risk to achieve even moderate gains. And that's it, man. No, no dipping in a toe. <laughs> you got to go for it. Not that your gain is restricted in any way. It's quite the opposite. In fact, the field is wide open. The potential is greater than great. The access to your fulfillment of desire is risk. There is implicit in this hexagram the cosmological metaphor of being at war. Being at war with all that has held you and the whole of humanity back from the physical, the environmental, the spiritual leap of faith that right now is necessary and possible at this shift on earth. 
and the earth is in jeopardy, and we know it. So got to pay attention, got to come to the place of service, come to the place of service, come to the place of love, come to the place of being who it is that we are, and we must remember that. We must remember who it is that we are, and never forget, never forget that we are in service to the planet. Never forget that we are at this place that while the earth, while she is in jeopardy, that we come to the place of love and we come to the place of light and we come to the place of being ready, uh-huh, being ready. And we've got to get ready because people get ready. It is that time, right? You want, you want your desires? Okay. Look where you take your risk. So it is time for that spiritual leaf of faith. This hexagram says that to clear the way for yourself, your family, your tribe, community, and collective, you can no longer be the ordinary civilian. Mm, no more. It's not the civilian who stands by observing the rush of activities flooding through your personal reality scene. Uh -huh. You must enter the fray by accepting the mantle of leadership in your personal journey and among the collective. This means basic human social responsibility. Got it? Basic human social responsibility. It is your responsibility to the greater good, and we have that. It's inherent in us. And if we are not activating that, we are not activated, fully activated. Look, we can get stuff done. There's no doubt about that. And we can have, we can have, you know, joy, success, failures, love, all of it. We can have it, but not to the level that we are entitled to. Because we understand that we have responsibility. That responsibility, yes, to the community, to the tribe, to the planet, to the sentient beings. And we must activate that, right? Because that's where the benefit lies. The benefit lies in activation that we come together. And we understand that it is indeed the basic human responsibility. Now, the benefit is waiting as you carefully and thoroughly align your inner life with your movement forward. Got that? As you're moving forward, align your inner life. You know, just don't move forward without doing the work, is what it's telling you. Do your inner work, and your life moves forward in a way that is beneficial to yourself and beneficial to all. You can marshal your inner forces and set about reading to meet the challenge. There's some very real forces here both on the inner and outer levels of experience that are being triggered as a response to your quest for achieving progress and for bringing completion to your plan, your plan of attaining contentment and peace of mind. That's where you're headed. You are the leader of your quest. Don't look outside yourself for the answers right now. As a leader, your own leader, you're called into service. Service, in this case, is not a whimsical venture. It is a vital component. Be disciplined as you marshal your inner forces, your legions. This challenge, we we'll call it a test if you want, but it must be met with an organized plan that is directed not by the ego. We must have a plan and not directed by the ego, worrying about how you're going to look, how you're going to be seen by others, right? If it's directed by the ego, it will throw you off track. It is right now, it's from trusting your inner knowing that we all have, the conjunctio of heart and mind. That means the, the joining of heart and mind. And you will not be harmed, and you will emerge victorious only if you meet the challenges with integrity, compassion, and honesty. Honesty. As you uh, neutralize, or let's say defeat, the negative forces, the negative influences around you, you're going to find yourself emerging victorious with the achievement of having merged with the great flow, the cosmic flow. As your abundance package unfolds, Got it? We've all got the package for abundance. We've just got to unwrap it 
and unwrap it with consciousness and love and being there, right? Don't fall prey to the ego making noise in the background. Hey, you can do that. You look good. You, got, you know that voice is for yapping, the yapping ego. The coyote, come on, you can do that. You're not doing it right. You know that voice. It wants to lure you into a victory lap down the red carpet amid the flashing and clicking of some imagined paparazzi. That's the fantasy. Look, you're going to look like a fool <laughs> going to that place. It's time to be humble. Now, look, you, you can use the energy for that. You can. You can use the energy to get in the red carpet and, and be flash and be all that. But right now, be humble. Be humble and use this energy to calm the mind, right? To nourish the soul, nourish the heart. Be in compassion. Let your victory quietly benefit all. With the intent to have your victory be benefit to all, is how you realize that we are all in the need of healing. And stay in the flow. You've sacrificed much to be here. Still your mind and use these newfound gains because they're coming to bring an elegant, to bring an elegant simplicity to your life as you share the benefits. Through sharing love and respect with all around you, then you move into this beneficial place of a still mind, an open heart. Less is the way of display, right? Less in the way of display is indeed at this juncture in the time wave, right? That you have it, but just you don't have to put it out there and say, hey, look what I've done. I'm shining light. Look at the energy I brought in. It's not about that. It's just about taking it, moving, and get there. I mean, a lot of times out of fear, we don't think we're good enough to get it, right? And fire that fear deep inside of us. But this time, and be ruthless with yourself. As you examine your pinch home for drama, for fear, bring truth to the lies that you've told yourself. The lies about you not being good enough or you're too late. Let's go through this, right? The lies that we tell ourselves. You know, we say, well, I'm not really good enough to get that. If you got those thoughts going, you ain't going to get it. So you got to correct those thoughts. That's where you come into the corrections. Correct the thoughts because you are good enough. And this is, well, you're too late. You know, you haven't done it right. Maybe you're too old or maybe you've given too much up. Ain't what it's about, you see. You're not too late. you got to understand that you're right on time because you're here and you're entering into it. Do you fear that you're not up to the task of leadership? Or are you concerned that if you take such a blatant and sometimes outrageous risk to face everything boldly, fearlessly, that you will fail? Understand this. As you move forward, you cannot fail. This is not a situation you can fail in. You see, the nature of the quest is such that those who enter with integrity and compassion cannot fail. You know, they talk about universal laws. Okay, here it is. And once you assume the role at the proper level of, of, of leadership and that you've taken the first step into risk consciousness, you'll be nourished by the influence of the awaiting abundance because it is there for you. All you got to do is start. Cross the line in the sand that's right in front of you. And you are there right where you need to be. It's here that you will have the vision. It's here you'll have the strength. And it's here as you cross the line that the confidence comes you'll need to accomplish the goals of the sacred journey. The role of being in support of Gaia, support a community, working for the greater good, and that's where your growth comes. And look, we're talking about these things outside of ourselves, yeah. But understand, the sacred journey is not all about the outside part of ourselves. Yes, be in support of Gaia, be in support of the planet, be in, part, in, in the ecology of the planet. 
support that, support growth around it, but understand that it is causing the growth in you that brings a benefit in your relationships with your associates, that you're joining with all sentient beings. Most of all, it works on the inner plane, and this will free you to free your spirit and bring you in touch with your authenticity of the interconnected whole. We are all connected. You're gathering by the river to marshal your forces. These forces are made useful by taking the transformational leap into risk, the risk of being guided and fully trusting your intuition. Okay, that's the risk. And by taking that risk, your intuition gets stronger. By taking the risk, your intuition gets clearer. As you open your eyes, you open your heart, and fear not, you are in initiation, and that's what's happened. Once you make the leap, you're in movement, always being aware that the risk is your companion, right? You're not alone. Risk is your companion. Your energetic fuel, the fuel that you have, that's what it is, you see. That's the risk that fuels you. It's not about an enemy. It's not about an obstacle. It's about you right now. And you know well the work that you have done for yourself. You've studied, paid attention, gained knowledge, and you've made many self-improvements too. You've learned techniques to bring about equanimity. Consider the accidental lessons that come as a shocking surprise that at first you get filled with fear. And gracefully, or not, <laughs> you've moved into the heart and the soul. Now you're facing a karmic challenge whether in your business, your relationships, your family, your health, or in your sense of place in your emotional, physical, or spiritual well-being. You're being called on to gather these sacred elements and bring them together to make the shift in your personal situation. With actions such as these, you will triumph and will be one with your inner light and your powerful self, your well-honed inner forces. You're supporting yourself from the work you've done, right? We all have, we're not alone, we all have the joyous dancing spirit with us, and that is recognizing you. And this is pleasing spirit, this action. You are called to the collective. You're called to roll with your helpers. You're called to go to the road less traveled because this is a great adventure, this initiation. Look to your helpers, praise them, point out their strength and judge not their weakness or your own. Mm, don't self-denigrate. If it's in your family or your tribe or your friends, point out, bring it up. Tell them that they're good. Tell them, give, a, give praise. You have teachers, praise your teachers. You know, give, give some points this way, see? If you have people working for you, or you're working with people, point out the people that work with you, their strengths, and judge not their weaknesses or your own weakness. Consider this. You have an army of companions, whether they're near or far, they're there, and that will support you and be the fuel to carry you across the divide, the place where divine spirit emerges and connects with you all. Allow your intuition to point the way. Trust the feeling of oneness, for it is oneness where you will find that you are not alone. And we are not alone. The New Earth I Ching is available on Amazon and I think on Goodreads, a few places. It's, a, it's, it's really good. I mean, it's my translation. It's my interpretation of the I Ching. Um, but I recommend it highly to have a companion. You get, in the, you get in the jam, you have it right there with you. 
or you're coming into a new time where you just want to get the feeling of where things are at in your life, use it. You know, it's like I use it every week to bring it to you, but I use it for myself in my, in my time moving forward. I highly recommend that you check it out. As they say, buy my book. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that's it for this week. You know, we come to this place where we talk, say, power to the people you bet. The haiku talks about light, the sweet shifting light. Yeah, it comes. It's carving shadows in the sand. May I have this dance. It's been quite a week. You know, we come into the quiet time that I need, that we all need. And I recommend that we sit and allow ourselves to write some poetry, write some prose. At the retreat, there's a wonderful poetry teacher, Kate Ballou, and she taught it and Everyone wrote poems and brought that out of themselves because we all have it in ourself, you know, that poetic part of ourself. And a few days ago, I wrote this poem. And it was, you know, after I, after I wrote it, I think it shouts out to men, right? I think it shouts out to men. I think it does to women as well, but it'd be interesting to know what you think. Everybody hears a poem differently, like we see a painting differently. We hear the I Ching differently because we're different. Am I to be reborn, to rise from the dust of stars formed as a beautiful young woman? My life as a man is her teacher. I will tell her I, I know what I know, what I learned in this life of being lonely. My karma is of influence to her. I know how to be happy and whole. I know what a warm hand can do placed on my heart of struggle. Bloods join through skin of hand, bloods join through skin of chest. I will tell her in my way that she can heal a lifetime with a touch, that she can harvest pain like dying wheat and send it to the wind to grow again in fertile fields. And now I write. I write out of longing. So this hole of pain is filled with love. I will tell her that pain is a brief gust that clears the clouds of ego. I want her to know the longing of men, the longing of men to be touched on heart's chest. I want her to know I'm with her, for now I know she is with me. I'm influenced by her every moment. I want the her in me now to know she has brought comfort. How many times on this karmic wheel? It must be once. Once is enough. <laughs> oh, I speak to you of poetry this week. There's going to be a book of my poetry and a book of my haiku. Probably be ready, hopefully by Christmas. Be a great Christmas gift along with uh, I Ching. For yourself. So I wrap it up and I close up the mixing board and put the microphone away until next week. And I send you all the love that I can muster from here at the 20th Parallel. And I say, as we do in the Yucatan, as the Mayans do, and we picked it up, right? We picked it up. You know how phrases come and they come and they come and they, they, they help us express what we're feeling. 
And these words are in lakesh alakin, meaning I am the other you. So all my dears out there, in lakesh alakin, I am the other you, and I know you know I like it that way. Yes, I do. Namaste, y'all. Namaste. Namaste, goddesses. Namaste, heroes, men. Join together. Be good to each other. Be the love that you desire. Teach peace with every step. Namaste. Namaste.